Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Well, yeah, I found out there's no Hyper-V Server 2022, but I still want to start working with Windows Server 2022. We'll be doing it in our Hyper-V Server 2019 lab. You might want to watch these videos. These have gotten a lot of views over the last couple of years. Hyper-V Server 2019 is good for another five years of support under Microsoft. That's extended support. Okay, yeah, and this was a popular video too, remotely managing a Hyper-V server that's in work group because I don't want to join my personal laptop to a domain that's in the lab, <laughs> etc. So there's, there's a lot of settings I had to go through and I'll have to test it for Windows 11 now. But we're going to go on to doing sysprep with unattend on server 2022 and I want to build that server base image in this episode. And then in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to do the unattend file for sysprep. Okay, yeah, we've got to get it poised to be able to do this. I just want to be able to run a script that creates a machine on the Hyper-V server, switch it on, and I can RDP into it. I don't need to tick off the EULA agreement, etc. Okay, so here I'm in the new machine wizard, and I'm calling it base2022. My Hyper-V path is D Hyper-V on my Hyper-V server. Now I was debating generation one, generation two. Does it box me into something? Will it do what I need it to do? And they're just saying in general, it's better to use generation two with the latest operating system. Best availability of features. Okay, so generation two it is. I'm gonna go with uh, two gigs of memory We'll go back here to the hardware requirements and they're saying the minimum is two gigs for the desktop experience. Again, this is just a base image and we're going to use it as a parent for differencing disks. So my new VM will just be a differencing disk based on the base image. Okay, we want our guest machine hooked to the LAN and there's my name of my disk and the location of the disk for this base image and I'm only going to make it 40 gigs. It's never going to get really get bigger because we're not going to be running it. It's going to sit idle and the differencing disk will be the live disk that represents a unique virtual server. So yeah, there's my D drive. Yeah, I downloaded the server 2022 ISO, the DVD ISO. So we can uh, install from that and we're going to go ahead and finish creating this machine. Now we just want to switch it on long enough to tweak a few settings. Like I say, we want to make sure uh, remote desktop is enabled. I want to turn off server manager at startup. We're going to do that in the course of this video. Yeah, there's the location of the VHDX file for our base 2022 image. And I'm going to update my script here. This script creates that differencing disk and builds a virtual machine based on this 2022 base image. And it assigns uh, dynamic memory, adds a spare uh, hard disk as well. So that you have a data disk and an operating system disk. So that's what the script does. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start up my base 2022 machine going to go ahead and connect in to it. Again, this is in Hyper-V and it's not as convenient as RDP. You can't copy and paste from your desktop to a Hyper-V session. That's what really, you don't want to have to get stuck doing any of this. I don't want to accept the EULA or set the language. It, can you imagine going through these steps every single VM you drive yourself insane? I'm just going to go with standard edition desktop experience. I don't really think I need data center. Okay, again here, I don't want to see this. I, I accept the terms. <laughs> but uh, on my VM that I launched, I just want it to pop up and I want to RDP into it. I want to already know the administrator password. I want the time zone set correctly and the language set correctly. And so building this base image gives us this opportunity to do that. You can see this, I've compacted this a lot, so it's uh, gonna go faster. But I wanted to show you everything that you're gonna see when you're installing Server 2022. I mean, uh, I'm only gonna do this once. After this, I will never see this again, because I'm just gonna run that script, launch that machine, RDP in, install whatever Windows rolls, etc., and start uh, going to work with it. 
in my lab. Yeah, my domain controller has already used up all six of its rearms. So it's been running in evaluation mode for three years because you can run SL Manager VBS slash rearm. You can do that up to six times. So, uh, <laughs> so, so my, my domain controller is dead. I'm not going to build another server 2019 server in my lab. I've got a AD Connect sync server and a PKI server running. And they're on server 2019, but they're going to run out too. Yeah, here I want to get rid of this, setting the administrator password. I'm going to include that in my unattend XML. And it will be configured when I run sysprep with the unattend parameter. So we get rid of that. All right, so the machine started up. And again, here you can't copy or paste. You have to type everything in the uh, Hyper-V connection console. We're still cropping and compressing, but you get to see everything here. Okay, we're booting up. Okay, gosh, that's one of the ones I don't know where to set this in the unattend is how to set uh, network discoverability. I'll have to find that. Yeah, see here, server manager launches by default. And you got to wait it out and then you got to close it. I am interested in testing out that Windows Admin Center again. We're going to check that out. Look for a future video of the, on that. But don't show me this message again. Okay, so the first thing in server manager, we want to enable remote desktop. There we go. Click on that. Click OK. And apply and OK. It doesn't change right away, so I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh up here. And again, working in the Hyper-V connection console, it's, it's not as easy as using remote desktop, an RDP session. OK, we see remote desktops enabled. So now let's go on to get rid of server manager at startup. I know we're going to need PowerShell. Okay, we're going to run as administrator. I did a quick Google search over here on disabling server manager at startup. So it's basically get scheduled task, task name, server manager. Okay, and then we're going to disable scheduled task with the verbose parameter. We run that. Okay. So that task has been disabled. Basically, that scheduled task runs every time a new user logs on. <laughs> every time I log on. It's like, no, I don't want that. So now, in the next episode, we're going to be able to run sysprep unattend. We're going to install the Windows ADK, show you how to make an unattend XML file, and how to run sysprep unattend against it. And I'm going to show you that all of those things that I wanted to get rid of are, are gone. It basically, I just run the script, it fires up the machine, and I can RDP to it right away, and I know the admin password. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Leave a comment down below. Give this video a like, and before you go watch more of my Windows administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.